Chuck, we spent a whole explainer talking about constellations, and I didn't finish. Oh, cool. Can well, you let me continue? Excellent. Yes. With your permission. <laughs> Granted, sir. Let's see if you learned anything from the first session. How many constellations are there? Oh, God. 48. Oh, Did I get it? No. Chuck, I said... <laughs> What? There are as many constellations as there are keys on a piano. Oh, that's right. 88. I got half of it, right? No, I got the eight. Don't, that's not I how got that the works. Eight. <laughs> I got the eight, right? <laughs> if we're going to the moon and the engineer says, I got half of it, right? Oh, that's not... Well, you got there. I mean, you're as not you coming back. you float out in space, missing right. your target. You're not coming back. I got half of it, right? <laughs> All right. So we said some cool things, I think. 88. That, yes. uh, Southern Hemisphere constellations known to indigenous people from the southern hemisphere right would be later discovered by europeans and when they named it they had or, they were already deep into the industrial revolution and they so named them they started naming them not after equipment. mythical magical creatures but after like stuff that was enabling the emergence of a new kind of brand a new like sextant another level of civilization there's a right. sextant by the way before the sextant was invented which was 60 degrees of a circle right. okay there's six of those. Six times 60 is 360 degrees. What preceded that was an octant. Wow. Okay. That was an eighth of 360 degrees. The sky has a sextant and an octant in it. Very nice. That feels a little excessive to me. All right. You know, be happy with one, but no, you want two. Two out of the 88 constellations are navigational devices that are kind of the same. You, you know. can never have too many tools. You know? <laughs> That's true. Okay. You can never can't over right. tool anything. So a couple of things. Um, what's, in your mind, the most famous constellation in the Southern Hemisphere? Oh, in the Southern. God. See, so what I was going to say, but that's not Southern, was Big Dipper. But everybody knows that. Yeah, that's the North. Yeah. That's the yeah. North. Okay. Yeah, in you're the Southern Hemisphere. 8,000 miles off. I know. Um, <laughs> I said it was in the North. No. Nine I, out of ten people say the Southern Cross. I was about to say the cross. You yeah. do, you were not. I no really was. That. No, let me tell you something. I really was about to say the cross, but I was scared to do so because one night we were sitting out and you had your, you know, top secret uh, sky pointer. Government issue. <laughs> and you were, and you, but there's a cross in the north too. Yeah. That you would, and so that's why I, would, I was about to say cross, but. Okay. So there's a northern confused. cross, which we love here in the northern hemisphere, and there's a southern cross but they're really different from each other. Okay. The Southern Cross is embarrassing compared to the Northern Cross. Oh no. Okay. The oh, Southern funny. Cross has four stars in it. Okay. It's in the shape of a rhombus. Uh, there is no star there's, there's no, there's at no the cross. transept. Right, yeah. So you could have just drawn a rhombus to remind people from eighth grade geometry. A rhombus is like, take a perfect square, sit on it, distort the sides, and then you get a rhombus, okay? So it is a stretch to call the Southern Cross a cross. It's a stretch. I'm just telling you. Wow. Not only that, of all 88 constellations, the Southern Cross is the smallest. Oh. Your thumbnail at arm's reach would completely cover all four stars of the Southern Cross. Oh. It is one of the biggest marketing delusions there ever was. And isn't I mean, there a Crosby Stills uh, song? Crosby, Nat, um, Crosby Stills the and Southern Nash? Cross. Oh, okay. uh, that's the only line I know of it because it has uh, okay, astronomical. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know this song at all, but. <laughs> well, they didn't sing that in the hood. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, CSR, that's, uh, you know, it's a little <laughs> Caucasian for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, don't so, get me wrong, but I, you know. So this, I just want to put put it out there with the Southern Cross. Now, have you ever met people who have visited the Southern Hemisphere anywhere, be it Africa or Australia? Right. And and they come back, and what do they tell you about the sky? Uh, I, you know, I never really got into it. <laughs> never got. Into it. I normally ask them about the place they okay. were. <laughs> See, that's. That's How's how the clubs? You, How's the yeah, exactly? You know, tell me about the food. What did you see? You know, okay. only you would be like. And so the night sky. Yeah, tell I'm sorry. Me, I'm tell a little me more about here. that night sky. <laughs> what happens is people visit the southern hemisphere and they come back and they say the southern hemisphere hemisphere sky is so beautiful. Yeah. it is so amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and 
And so there's another little delusion going on there as well. And what is that? I don't want to stop you from liking the Southern Hemisphere sky better than the North. I, I, I have no problems with that. But there are forces operating that contaminate your data. Okay? Okay. Do you know how much of Earth's land is in the Southern Hemisphere? Um, I would say not a lot. Not a lot. About. I mean, when you look at Africa, it's like, that's most of it. Yes, okay. <laughs> About 15% of Earth's land mass is south of the equator. Okay. Yeah. That's also about 15% of Earth's population. Oh. Okay. So hardly anybody lives in the Southern Hemisphere. Right. So there's hardly any city lights, hardly any light pollution, air pollution, all the things that subtract away from our experience embracing the sky in the North does not block your view in the South. So people think the actual sky is better because they can see it better. Wow. So I'm telling you that the North has all the coolest constellations. All right. You know, with the Big Dipper and, the, you know, and the Little Dipper and the, you know, and, 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 and Cassiopeia, some constellations straddle the north and the south. Orion is half in the north and half in the south. But when we look at him, he's right side up. If you want to see Orion in the southern hemisphere, he's upside down. That, there's, that's, there's no excuse for that. So I'm just I'm a northern chauvinist here, but I think I have good reason for it. Yeah, but the, the problem is we can't see it. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, you can be as hot as you want, you know, but if you're walking around in a burlap sack, <laughs> nobody's going to know. What nobody you knows how hot you are. <laughs> wow. We so, gotta get rid yeah. So this, this is an interesting is. fact about it. Now, here's a so the Northern Cross is much bigger than the Southern Cross. And there's a star in the transept for it. OK, it's called and that's an asterism. An asterism is a set of stars that is the more interesting subset of all the stars that comprise the constellation. So the Northern Cross is Cygnus the Swan, the constellation, which is not only those stars in the cross, but there are other stars where you can imagine wings and it's flying long neck, neck swan along the Milky Way. So it's a beautiful thought that there's a swan doing this, but it's bluntly a cross. Now, last thing I'll tell you, there's more, but I just want to sort of put it out there. Um, many of the star, uh, star constellations are all Greek and some latter-day technologically related ones. But some of the earliest navigators were the Arabs. Okay, The entire Arabian Peninsula, all those folks, there are very few clouds because it's desert. And so you saw the night sky and you want to get around. There's no monuments. There's no GPS. There are no mile markers. How are you going to get around? So they pioneered astrolabes, which was their version of the European sextant, okay, and the octant. But the astrolabe, they did it first, and, and it beautiful works of art with rotating dials, and you hold it up, and you can get the angle, and, you, and there are tables and charts. It's magnificent, all etched in brass, beautiful. We have a collection at the American Museum of Natural History, but one of the largest collections in the world is at the Adler Planetarium and Astronomy Museum in Chicago. They have one of the largest collections of astrolabes in the world. Anyhow, point is, as an homage to the Arabic role in navigating the sky, two-thirds of all stars in the sky that have names have Arabic names. Oh, wow. This is part of the sort of inclusiveness of my field, where if you contributed to it, we're not going to forget you. And, and by the way, in the constellation Libra, the scales, um, the two brightest stars in that constellation are Arabic names. One of them is Zubin el Janubi, and the other is Zubin es Shamali. Okay. Those are the two longest star names of all named stars in the sky. And what is the abbreviation for... Pound. LBS. LB. You know what LB right. stands for? Uh, uh, I, no, I don't. Libra. <laughs> the scales. It just okay. gets worse. <laughs> First, you go from pounds to LB. Right, right. And, <laughs> it's, and LB is a short and for Libra, the for scales. Libra. Right. The measurement of things. 
That's so cool. All right. That's been a, an explainer constellation part two. And I'm going to stop there. I could go on, but we, we got We can't. We can't let other stuff go unexplained while we right. spend all this time on constellation. Well, we'll come back to it. So, next time we come back, we will leap to another place that's in desperate need of explaining. Awesome, Chuck. Always good to have you. Always a pleasure. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. <laughs>